Hello, this is Hawker Devine, and today we are going to r slash entitled parents again. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. My uh, parents don't want to move out. I'm expecting that... This is going to have something to do with with them being in, in Arabic. I do not know what to do. I'll finish university in a year and a half, and I would like to leave in one way or another, as I can no longer live with my parents. They have no respect for my time and space, and they hate the fact that I could become financially independent in any way. They are Arabs and traditionalists. They don't want me to go until I get married, so that I can always be controlled, even though in a in religion, a woman can live alone. The fact that the only plausible solution is probably to get a scholarship by entering another university. Obviously, it's a voluntary choice. I want to go to this university to get accommodation included for all women like me at two hours away from them. Despite this, I'm afraid they will refuse to let me go. I would need to lie to be able to go that distant and wider than near one. I'm also afraid that they might follow me or control me, or worse, move to the city with me. But I have a younger sister who I hope will study here in the city and force them not to move. I've already started collecting money for emergencies, but I need to find some jobs which will definitely make it difficult for me as they don't want me to do anything but study. Money equals independence. They are afraid of it. How did you do it? Do you have any advice? Hmm. I think um this one on might be the best advice I've seen in in so far. Hey, I'm sorry to hear about your situation. Universities offer support services that you can chat to that can help you figure out what to do next. I'd also spin it with your parents. Make them idolize the idea of having such a clever daughter with a degree. Look into single-sex accommodation and a big up on that, that option too. Make them at ease about it. Even better, make it their idea. Yep, pretty much when you have a controlling parents like this, it's best to manipulate them. And that's what uh, they want you to learn on how to do anyway, because that's the only lesson you learn from um, abusive parents. Your mother and I have sacrificed our, all our married life so that you could grow to adulthood fully prepared to succeed in life. Now go clean your room. The fact is, and you should tell them in a grateful tone of voice, they did succeed in a parent's main job. Preparing their child for a successful adult life. A smart, confident, ambitious woman in this day and age, yay you. And when you graduate, the world is your oyster. An old saying, and you'll find your pearl in that oyster. Whether a great job, a great partner, any other happiness that all parents should want for their children. By the way, stick to your plans to move out. You can make money later. You'll never make money at home. Yeah, I think in, 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 in this might be the best um, idea. If you want to escape a, a, their control, maybe even and going on the streets for a bit is a bit better than having to deal with them controlling every aspect of your life. Although I'd say probably it just make it their idea to make you go to this faraway college instead of the one that's right nearby. Anyway, religious kids of entitled parents. What passive-aggressive Bible verse can I post as my I say this? Mine have forced me to go to church as a kid and stopped trying when I started at wearing revealing clothing as an adult. They only practiced so far as there was a church service, but never did Bible reading and prayer with us outside giving grace for food. 
They are hypocritical in how they act towards outsiders and their kids. They care about money more than most things. I'm convinced my dad will sell me to a groom for the right price in a heartbeat. That's probably not a joke, man. Yeah. They can't get mad at me for posting Bible verses that reflect their hypocrisy. The best one, some of the best ones that I'm seeing here are, um, and we're gonna, a lot of these are just looking through comments to see what they say. This commenter says, Matthew 7, 3 to 5. Why do you look at the speck of stardust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your or brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite! Take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Basically, you have faults of your own, you should probably focus on them instead of focusing on others. <sighs> this person says they have a few. Oh wow, that's a lot. Okay, um, there's 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, and some people craving money have watered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Matthew 19.24 Mark ten twenty five and Luke eighteen and twenty five. Oh, 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 Jesus saying it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. I didn't know they had emojis in the Bible. That's amazing. Two Corinthians nine seven. Let every man and give according to the purposes in his heart, and not grudgingly or out of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Ecclesiastes 5.10 The one who loves money will never be satisfied with money. He who loves wealth will never be satisfied with his income. This also is futile. So many. <laughs> this comment is a bit longer than I thought it would be. It's good to point to just um, point out the hypocrisy of a lot of Christians because, uh, funny enough, if they actually read the Bible, a lot of them would drop it because uh, Jesus is actually pretty left leaning, like really left leaning. Matthew six twenty four, another quote from Jesus: "No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other." You cannot serve both God and money. Proverbs 14.31 Whoever approaches the poor shows contempt for their maker. Whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Just remember, I'm not religious, so I kind of forgot a lot about all of this. I remember the speck in the AI thingy, though. Proverbs 15.27, greed brings grief to the whole family. Proverbs 28.22, the, the stingy are eager to get rich and are uh, unaware that poverty awaits them. Okay, I think that's enough. Let's just move on to an entitled grandpa, I guess. I'm not religious. I'm not going to keep on reading religious quotes like that. Even if it's calling out, out, out a Christian's hypocrisy. A Christian's hypocrisy. Okay. Father-in-law feels owed a time with grandchildren. My father-in-law lives in our town, and for the past few years since my husband and I moved here and had children, we've seen him regularly, at least weekly, and allowed him to be a part of... Many family events, Christmas morning, trick-or-treating, etc. The problem is, I can't stand him. And I think recently, the fact that he's a perpetual part of my life is getting to me. My husband and I talk about this at length and really don't know how to handle it, as he is constantly applying pressure to see us. 
And when he doesn't end here from us even for a few days, it makes us think. I'd love to know what though those who have local grandparents and parents have in terms of expectations for time spent. <sighs> I don't know, we lived eight eight hours away from grandmother and every summer or or or, or my, and my siblings would be at her house. Now for details. Apologies, it was impossible to be concise. Off the bat, important to share that undoubtedly, my father in the last 78 is a textbook narcissist, undiagnosed as the worst one. And are. He was a terrible husband, verbally, emotionally, and perhaps physically abused my mother in law and brother in law, who is 10 years older than my husband. He really fucked up my brother in law, who is at 44, is also a huge narcissist with depression and other mental health challenges. And he cheated on my mother in law when my husband was 8. Because they divorced after that, my husband and miraculously ended up really unscathed. Aid and had a great childhood and fine relations with his dad, likely due to his mother shielding him and playing the role of primary caregiver. Hmm. In fact, father-in-law somehow managed to remain a part of everyone's lives, having some custody of my husband, brother-in-law was an adult by the time of the split, combining holidays with my mother-in-law and her new husband, and just generally being around. When I first met my husband, father-in-law was in a new relationship with a woman who was wonderful. It was after three failed marriages, my mother-in-law being his third, and a long-term partnership about 18 years. When you first meet him, he seems like a character more than anything. Very grandiose, clearly thinks he's charming and full of anecdotes. Anyone who gets to know him, however, finds that the anecdotes are the same and tired, and he can actually be quite rude. A lot of old people will seem more rude now than and I thought they were when I was younger. Domineering of conversations, selfish and stingy. His girlfriend broke up with him after eight years, because, which at first seemed to, like a shock to us. And quickly was not all that surprising, given how much better she was than him. She explained the breakup to him well. That for all his good qualities, she he could, simply couldn't handle his bad ones anymore. In particular, how he acts in public. See rudeness, stinginess, extra pompous behavior. The breakup devastated him, and while he initially seemed to reflect on the feedback she gave, quickly became her fault for the split, and he, being entirely alone in his life, became increasingly needy and more present in our lives than I had ever known him to be. We had just had our first child, and the thick in the thrones of of newborn life weren't able to offer him as much company as my brother-in-law was able to. Although I would oh note, he still was seeing us for an hour or so weekly. He became increasingly co-dependent with my brother-in-law, spending many evenings at his house late into the night, attending parties with my brother which my brother-in-law hosted, and even get vacationing with my brother-in-law and family. That brother-in-law can also can get irritated at his dad, and their relationship is a constant roller coaster of fighting or being attached at the hip. I'm sure there was complex psychological reasons for why brother-in-law was so supportive of him. But dear husband and I later realized that his motivation was at least partially financial. We realized this when we found out that our father-in-law bought a vacation home in an area of brother-in-law loves, and put the brother-in-law's name on the bill, on the deed. Now that situation could be an entirely different pose, and it should. But very quickly. A fight ensued and brother-in-law cut off all contact with father-in-law, 
They sold the house, and two years later, so have not broken. This fallout then left father-in-law with no one. Except for us. We tried to keep the same cadence of visits with him that we always had. Weekly or so. Dinners or quick visits with our children. However, driven largely by the fact that he really is alone, the requests to see us have done nothing but increase. Our, our ability to tolerate him waxes and wanes over time. So over the course of the last as years, we have had times that we've been more amenable to seeing him than not. Important to note my use of the word tolerate. Because at best, when you speak end time with him, it's fine. At worst, it's painstaking. It's also important for me to share the ways he is guilting us to see him. First is the explicit shameless guilt. I haven't heard from you in a while, or I'm not getting any younger, or I won't be around forever, so I need to spend time with my granddaughters. He is not shy. I had to tell us what we should be doing in terms of involving him. Second is trying to buy us and make us feel indebted through vainly veiled offers to help. This is where I struggle the most. Years ago, he gives us a large sum of money which we've kept in savings. They explained to us to make us even with my brother-in-law, who had lent the same amount of money two years prior and never received repayment or mention of repayment for it. Father-in-law said that in doing so, he would not have any worries of any at the time of his death when his will was being executed. I wasn't super comfortable taking the money, but knowing it was to equalize what the brother-in-law helped. Additionally, my father-in-law has given us some significant gifts. He's paid to install a safety fence around our pool, I just find this as something for my daughters, and gave us a new washer-dryer as a Christmas gift. I didn't really want either of these gifts to ha happen because I felt they wouldn't be guilt-free and because we were able to pay for them ourselves. But father-in-law practically begged as he wanted to contribute as we had just moved into a new house. Additionally, my own parents had contributed similarly to our home as well. Again, another way I, I justified since his offer er, er, to pay for things for us have not ceased. But my husband and I have agreed we will not accept anything from him again to avoid feeling associated guilt. It's obvious that his offers are a way to have control. In fact, following his fallout with brother-in-law, he quickly removed brother-in-law from his will, instead recruiting his share to a local animal shelter. Not surprising. He did this, as he explained to us, because he knew if he left it all to my husband, we would feel compelled to share it with my brother-in-law. Third and finally, he guilt trips us by constantly comparing what he gets to what my parents get in terms of time with us and my daughters. My parents are also local, much younger, 60, still working, have a house with the nursery and kids toys and treats, and are equipped to care for our children. We see them every week or two weeks, but in general, have more meaningful time with them too. We make a vacation with them and they are the backup caretakers for our daughters keeping them for nights or weekends when we are away, or being back up care on snow days or sick days. He is constantly whining about not having time as compared to them. And while we could explain all the reasons that logistically my parents get more time with us and the girls, ultimately we prefer them because they are normal, loving, and supportive, no strings attached to parents who, on top of it all, are people we enjoy being around. Hey, sounds like my parents. And of course, I'm by it's my own family, but my husband fully agrees. So all of this is huge context aside, I'm really struggling in on how to handle him. We've been living in a cycle of excuses on putting off seeing him. And then seeing him when we have to throw him a bone. Only to be guilted about it and not being enough. Despite his terrible past, 
He's never explicitly done anything wrong with to us. Nor is there any tangible evidence I can point to explain why I don't want him around. He obviously doesn't take feedback either, so a rational discussion about his behavior is off the table, and he is not a normal person who reads the room, so won't get a clue and back off. I'm just wondering, how much is he owed to see us, given all of this? He is a grandfather after all, and my daughters do have fun with him, but they have fun with everyone. And if the answer is nothing or not much, how do we manage making that happen? Here's the thing. He's a narcissistic grandparent. A grandparent who is who has uh, already been and pretty much given an in this story plenty of evidence of uh, being abusive and a and a not good person to have around children. Yeah, you don't owe him anything. Like, if you were are relying on him to basically re erase your children, this would be a different story, but he's not doing anything for you, he's doing stuff to you. And when he does something quote-unquote for you, it's actually for himself, so he can guilt you into ooh, ooh, doing what he wants. That's a bad grandpa. And a self-centered one. You are nothing. <sighs> Parents taking disability, taking fifty percent of of this person's disability pay. Got an update to my first post, maybe read that first if you want context. It was about parents taking 50% of any money I would make at jobs while living with them. That's not right. You decide on a fair amount to give them and 50% is not fair. I'm currently 15 and found out that when I'm, 15, when I'm 16 I'm going to be able to get disability money for existing and turns out my parents are now wanting to take 50% of that to put towards the house. And I don't know if any of this is right, but I'm a bit mad at it because isn't this money supposed to be for me? They had more trouble with my older siblings than they did with me, but they think they should get 50% of whatever the amount will be. This is money I could put towards helping myself, my life, and my future. Not paying for rent when they can indeed afford it. I should add that the pair A would be sent to me and not my parents. It's for autism. I won't waste the money I'm going to save up for an assistance dog and help me because I feel like the money should be used for my disability. I eat and drink less than my siblings. I don't use much electricity. I don't get a few months a year to, of, of the pay. Fuel is free. It's UK so free healthcare. If any other info is needed, please ask. I, I will still help them to pay for things just I... Feel 50% is too much considering my needs. Any amount is too much considering any, that you're getting it for disability. They're from the UK. They're in the UK, they can already drink at this, this age. They definitely didn't loss. Y'all just uh, as really American centric comments here. Yeah, this is pretty American centric.
Either way, I don't think your parents are entitled to any money that uh, uh, is, is supposed to be yours. Anyway, my bio dad texted me yesterday, my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Oh, that's like the worst. Contact. So I, 20 female, had no contact with my bio dad, 53 male. For three amazing years, due to the excessive amount of trauma and PTSD I have due to his verbal, physical, and psychological abuse. I have posted about him in here previously, but those posts hardly do what life I was like with him justice. Thankfully, I hardly lived with him due to his and my mom's custody agreement where I would visit him every other weekend until I was 14, where I had a say. But there was no need since the minute I hit puberty and outside my cute baby girl face, he got our visits to once a month for 30 minutes. His best record, by the way. And even before, he barely showed up to my birthdays. If he would come, he would give me money and a hug, which lasted at longest five minutes. Or any other holidays, which he used to take turns with my mom, but would cancel the last minute and not pick me up. He was a classic deadbeat, and I was his little trophy daughter who was only meant to be seen, not heard. He never showed me any real respect, since neither children nor wo or women need respect from any man. His words from when I was 14. With that context out of the way, I'm happy to answer more in the comments. I'm not going to read it, it, that. We are already it, it making a really long video today. Here's what he sent me, which is an almost perfect uh, copy and paste minus private info. Dear OP, this is your father. Dad. I'm sending you this message to wish you happy birthday and to say you are always in my heart and on my, on my mind. I follow you on social media just to keep up with you. You have become a very beautiful woman and I'm very proud of you. I always love you and I pray for your happiness. If you want, or want to contact me or know anything about me and how my life has turned out, I would love to talk to you. Feel free to text me or call me anytime. Love, your dad. Forever and always. Dad. Answer this number here. I am going to be 100% for real here. This freaks me out good. Happy freaking birthday to me. Yeah. I have a pretty pathetic egg bio dad that I never talked to as well. Kind of crazy. Might even and not be alive. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that my bio dad doesn't follow me on anything. Hopefully. Anyway. <sighs> Parents keep on asking how much money I make every day. I do a side hustle and they keep on asking how much I make every day and it's really annoying. I even told them to stop asking as I need peace as it will help massively in my side hustle but they still respect it and keep asking. And every time I tell them no and to stop asking they will go talk bad about me behind my back saying things like I'm not making money, I should be making thousands right now etc. And also every time my parents see me that's the only question they ask. They barely ask me questions such as, how I'm doing, am I okay, etc. But if they were to ask me those questions such as how I'm doing, they will follow up asking me about how much money I made for my side hustle that day. It always happens. The thing is that they clearly don't care about how I'm doing, if I'm okay. They just ask those questions to get close to me and then ask the real question they came to me for. Which is how much money you have made today. If there happens to be a day where my parents choose not to ask me the money a question, they will literally not talk to me for the whole day. As I guess they don't see it to as all they care about from me is money. I feel like an ATM to them. 
What should I do to combat all this? It's annoying. I feel unwanted too. I'm 21 and years old, by the way, guys, if anyone is wondering. Probably time to leave. Yeah, as of how but that's why they made a response. All right, let's get to the next one. This was the last one. I forget what the actual full title was, but. Oh, my parents won't let me home. Oh, God. I don't like this formatting, but let's just read it. I'm 18 male, and just when I approached 18, I was sectioned and had to go to a psychiatric hospital due to people thinking I'm paranoid and my uh, I operate. My mental health was really poor. My dad, I felt, has always provoked me. So we don't always get on, and I'm a high functioning autistic. Yeah, this is hard to read. He's always been hard on me and used to film me when something would stress me out, despite my mom telling him not to. There have been occasions like, like once we ran out of food, and I asked my dad to get some, and he refused, and I was irate, so he kicked the door. So he kicked the door, then threatened the police. I want him to take. He went to my grandparents and refused, so that and he called the police. Lay said the sin was him having to having loud music and asked him to turn it down, and he wouldn't. And I asked if after I came home he could turn it down. But he wouldn't, and says he doesn't care and can do what he wants. I was shouting, he then threatened the police and threatened to film me again. So I walked out and he followed, which triggered me. I would write my mom as well on these situations as she puts up with my dad and gives me the crap that she can't control him, she says. Does that mean she just lets him do what he wants? You're gonna be a toxic dynamic. It seems like a lot of these are actually just OPs who have to deal with entitled parents, but also. You're 18. He's probably in his like 30s or 40s. How the hell is he acting like a freaking 12 year old? What are you turning on? You say, No, I can do what I want. That's why he sounds like a freaking child. Anyway, I was distressed from um, the hospital, and my mom made it very clear I couldn't come home. The reasons are that I don't get on with my dad, and they want me to be independent, and they think it's not good for me to be living at home because I do nothing due to my depression. Which I've said I'll, I'll look for something to do, and I can learn things to be independent. And I don't need to be independent yet. Yeah, you've got cold parents. As for my dad, since the last instant, I've been getting on better with him, but I don't think that's a good enough reason. I've been staying with my grandparents for 8793, and I worry they won't be around forever. Oh yeah, definitely not. They won't. I mean, that's the thing about any grandparents, they won't be around forever. I just feel very unsettled not being at home, and it's a vicious cycle that I don't think my parents are being fair. So I ran at them and they said the same thing, that they're in touch with services to find me support and accommodation, but I don't think I could cope with the responsibilities. And I don't want to be there, but there's no talking to them as that only gets me into a state, and my dad says I can't ever come home. I'm lost, I feel alone. Any advice would be appreciated, and Honest opinions. <sighs> As for accommodations can help you learn how to Manage the responsibilities of living more independently. There are usually rules in those settings too, though. And things like kicking in doors won't likely be tolerated. And you will have to take on certain responsibilities for taking care of yourself. Cooperating with your parents to set up supported accommodations for you is probably going to be your best option. 
And while you're living more independently, you can work on improving your relationships with your dad. Really? That seems horrible. Don't try to improve relationships with your dad. Fuck that guy. He's an asshole. And he acts like a freaking ch and child. That's the thing I don't really like about some... Um, sometimes the writer opinions are the less empathetic ones. I want to see what Ophi said. Damn. Alright. I'm going to ignore that one because it seems... <sighs> I mean, I used to have quite a temper when I was younger. But then in high school, I gained an interest in metal music, and that really helped. You need to find a healthy outlet for um, your temper. That can be um, playing in, in video games. That can be metal music if you really if find that uh, uh, to be your, your way to go. That can be just something where you are sanctioned to be yeah, as destructive as you need to be. That's one thing that uh, you need. And another thing you need to do is um, probably try to work through what's going on, on at home. But most importantly, stop interacting with your or, 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 or dad. Like, my goodness, he sucks. No, I don't think he has any right to film it. And it's a kind of um, cruel thing to do to someone. <sighs> you film it for or, or a therapist, but I'm quite sure he's doing it to humiliate you. And that's just another level of entitled parent and behavior. Anyway... That's it for me. So I didn't read those comments out. I kind of lost interest after a certain amount of time. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!